In the shadowy depths of the world's oceans, where silence is supremacy and detection means defeat, two submarine classes have long ruled the stealth game. Sweden's Gotland class and Russia's infamous Kilo class, also known as the Black Hole submarine. While they serve different geopolitical roles and originate from vastly different naval traditions, these diesel-electric submarines are both hailed for their cutting-edge stealth and undersea warfare capabilities. But how do they really compare? Let's dive into this stealthy showdown. Russia's Kilo-class submarine, first introduced in the 1980s, is one of the most recognizable silent predators in naval warfare. Dubbed the Black Hole by NATO for its near imperceptibility underwater, this sub has carved out a fearsome reputation over the decades. Its latest variant, the Project 636.3, represents a significant leap forward in terms of electronics, propulsion, and weapon systems. What makes the Kilo class so elusive? It's primarily the result of its diesel-electric propulsion system, layered sound-dampening technology, and an efficient hull design that dramatically reduces its acoustic signature. When submerged and operating on battery power, the Kilo class becomes almost inaudible to enemy sonar, hence the nickname. Armed with six 533mm torpedo tubes, it can launch torpedoes, anti-ship missiles, and even land attack cruise missiles like the Kaliber. That versatility makes it a powerful tool, not just for defense, but for offensive strategic strikes. It's no wonder that Russia continues to produce and deploy the Kilo class, even as its next-gen Lada class faces developmental hiccups. However, while the Kilo is praised for its stealth and strike capabilities, it does have limitations. Its reliance on diesel-electric propulsion means that it must surface or snorkel periodically to recharge its batteries, potentially exposing itself to detection. And despite modernization, it still operates within a Cold War-era design philosophy, a platform heavily optimized for literal, not blue water operations. Now, let's shift our attention to the Scandinavian North. Sweden's Gotland-class submarines, first launched in the 1990s, are often described as some of the most advanced non-nuclear submarines ever built. Smaller than the Kilo class, but packing remarkable stealth innovations, the Gotland class became globally famous after a 2005 naval exercise in which it successfully sank a U.S. aircraft carrier during war games without being detected. The secret to the Gotland success? Air-independent propulsion based on Stirling engines. This allows the sub to remain submerged for weeks without surfacing a significant tactical edge over traditional diesel-electric subs like the Kilo. Its compact design, low acoustic signature, and advanced sonar make it nearly undetectable in coastal waters, which suits Sweden's defensive posture and geography. The recent midlife upgrades to the Gotland class, especially the HMS Halland, have taken these subs to a new level. According to naval technology, over 20 key systems were replaced or modernized, including advanced sensors, command systems, and communications, all aligning the Gotland class closer to the next-gen A26 Blakinga class design. Importantly, these upgrades weren't just maintenance, they were transformative. The Gotland class now serves as a technological bridge, bringing 21st century innovation to a tried and tested platform. It retains its AIP advantage while integrating new digital warfare capabilities, making it a hybrid of legacy reliability and futuristic technology. When it comes to modern diesel-electric submarines, Sweden's Gotland class and Russia's Kilo class often emerge as two of the most formidable contenders. But how do they really compare beneath the surface? Stealth capabilities form the heart of this comparison, and both submarines are designed to be exceptionally quiet. However, the Gotland class holds a distinct advantage thanks to its Stirling Air Independent Propulsion System. 
This advanced feature allows it to remain submerged for extended periods without needing to surface or snorkel for air, an operation that can expose a vessel to detection. In contrast, while the Kilo class is still remarkably silent, its dependence on snorkeling for battery recharge creates vulnerabilities during longer missions. This endurance gap gives the Gotland a decisive edge in stealth-focused operations, such as long-duration surveillance or surprise ambush scenarios. When it comes to weaponry, Russia's Kilo class clearly outguns its Swedish counterpart. The Kilo is capable of launching caliber cruise missiles, including variants designed for land attack missions. This grants it a level of strategic reach and deterrence far beyond the capabilities of the Gotland class. Sweden's submarines, by comparison, are more modestly armed, equipped primarily with torpedoes and naval mines. These weapons are highly effective in coastal defense roles, but lack the long-range strike capacity of the Kilo-class arsenal. Versatility is another important factor, and here the Kilo-class again shows its strength. Designed for operations in both coastal and open waters, it benefits from a larger hull and extended range. The Gotland class, however, is purpose-built for the complex conditions of the Baltic Sea. In this shallow, heavily trafficked environment, its smaller size and exceptional maneuverability make it especially effective. While less suited to global missions, the Gotland excels in its home waters. Interestingly, both submarine classes hint at the future of diesel-electric undersea warfare. Russia continues to produce upgraded Kilo-class subs because of delays in its Lada-class project. Meanwhile, Sweden is leveraging its experience with the Gotland-class to develop the A-26 Blekinga-class, a modular, highly advanced AIP submarine intended to redefine conventional submarine operations. The stealth showdown between these two isn't just a matter of who's quieter or deadlier. It's a battle between two naval doctrines, Russia's outward-facing strike-focused strategy versus Sweden's inward precision defense approach. And both nations are evolving these doctrines to meet 21st century maritime challenges. In the end, comparing the Gotland and Kilo-class submarines isn't about declaring a winner. It's about understanding their strengths and the roles they play. If you're looking for a stealthy hunter that can slip past defenses, stay submerged for weeks, and control the coastal choke points, the Gotland class is your champion. But if you're seeking a silent strike platform with teeth, one that can launch missiles across borders and defend a wide maritime frontier, the Kilo class reigns supreme. Two submarines, two philosophies, one underwater battlefield. So, that's all for today. Thanks for watching.